Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Elam Jr. Welcome to our broadcast today here at Dunamis. We're so happy and honored that you're watching today. Today is going to be a good day. Some good is about to happen to you. We're continuing talking about this year, unveiling Jesus. The Lord told me that the world needs him unveiled because they don't they doesn't they don't know him and the church sometimes doesn't trust him but if we can know who Jesus is we'll have so much faith and confidence no matter what we face every knee you know has to bow watch this they going to bless you thought for tomorrow for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. what this is talking about is that um, the first thing we're going to do before we ask God for anything is that this year we are going to seek Jesus amen, amen. seek ye first the kingdom of God seek the essence of Jesus seek the personal relationship with Jesus Seek the intimacy of Jesus. Seek his will before your will. Amen. Amen. And it tells us here, if we do that, it says all these other things shall be added. What things? The blessings, the favor, the miracles, whatever you need him to do. How many need God to do something for him this year? Amen. Amen. Whatever we need him to do, he's promised that, that if we'll just seek him first, and he said, Everything else will be added unto you. And then it says, take therefore no thought. In other words, you can't, don't take a thought. I mean, don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't be worrying about stuff. Look at somebody said, stop your worrying. And he said, I know how to take care of you. So we got to make sure that we, in this year, don't go in full of fear, full of worry, full of care. We got to make sure we cast everything on Jesus and stay at the feet of Jesus and make sure that we put him first and let it be about him, not about us. Amen. Say amen if you understand that. Amen. Because a lot of times, I don't know about you, between last Sunday and this Sunday, all types of things could, can happen. Amen. amen. And you got to make sure, do you understand, wait a minute, before the things happen, I always made my mind up, I'm not going to be tripping. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to let the devil rent space in my mind. And that's what you got to understand because the devil want to rent space in your mind. He didn't pay for it, but he want to rent space in your mind. He want to keep in your mind and keep you away from thinking about Jesus and what he's done and think about whatever thing he's doing. <clears throat> so this year, we're not doing that. We're seeking a personal Jesus. We're, we're unveiling Jesus. That's what we're talking about. Somebody said, unveiling, unveiling Jesus. Well, just look at um, another scripture here in 2 second, second Peter. The Bible says, our two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So we'll see here in 2 Peter, in the first chapter, Second Peter, first chapter, we see here in verse 3. Let's read that out loud. Wait, that ain't what I'm talking about. Hold up. I'm in first Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. Ready? Read. According to his divine power, hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So what this is saying. He's saying that the divine power, that is, that is God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has divine power. Amen? Amen? And it says here, let that Holy Spirit with divine power, because of it, he hath given us all things. In other words, everything that pertains to life and godliness when you're in Christ has already been done. You got to see it that you don't have to believe for him to do something that he's already done. What we need to do is get in position and believe that he's already done it. Amen? 
because it tells us here everything pertaining to life and godliness is done by how? Through the knowledge of him. Look at the Message Bible. The Message Bible says everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has miraculously been given to us. See, the miraculous means the Holy Spirit is the one, he's a miracle worker. He's miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. In other words, we need to get to know personally and intimately Jesus. Mm. Once you get to know him, then the things that he's already done will be done for us. Well, if I'm getting to know him, unveiling Jesus means uncover him, reveal to him. Why? The Lord told me this. Why do you need to do this, Pastor? Because he said the world don't know him and the church don't always trust him. <laughs> that is a lack of knowledge of who he is. Because if you know the love of someone, your attitude is different. Any one of you, when my children were small, could be come up here and all of a sudden you stand down there and you tell my sons, jump off here with your eyes closed. They're going to catch you. They don't know you. So they'll look at you. They don't quite know, will you catch or are you capable of catching them? So they can't quite just jump with full, full trust because they don't quite know you. But if I stand down there, they know I love them. They'll, they'll close their eyes and jump, woo, bam, because they know daddy got them. Why? Because I have spent personal time for them to experience. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here. So you got to understand that when that happens, then you can, you can relax more. Come here for a second, sir. You look like you're pretty thick there. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't quite know him. Well, I don't, let's say I don't know him that well. But he has the capabilities of catching me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know him, then I'm kind of hesitant and letting go. I'm like, oh, thank I can. You know, I'm hesitant, okay, oh, oh, okay, okay, you got me there, you know. And, you know, I think he will. Um, he act like, mm, mm, uh, uh. See, I'm hesitant because I really don't know him. That's how most of us in the spirit is. But once you spend time with Jesus, I know he got me. Like I said, hey. Hey, what's he say? What's say? I am not, I do it without thinking. Amen. Can we start learning to trust Jesus without thinking? Thank you, sir. So what I'm about to show you today is to get to know the Lord a little better. Because once you know him that way, your confidence change. So how are we going to know him? I'm gonna, uh, you're going to unveil Jesus. We're gonna unveil, we're gonna, he's more than what we think. Okay, look at John 14. God, who is it? Somebody said, who is he? In John, get digging wheel, a hand for not dropping me. It'd be a shame if he had caught a cramp in the hand. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Just give God praise for the lady coming back in, too. Praise God. Amen. Look what it says. John, John 14, John 14 and 16. Do you have it? John 14 and 16. Mm. I'm going to show you that Jesus is the Holy Spirit manifested. Somebody say that. Jesus is, Jesus is the, Holy the Holy Spirit manifested. Yes. I'm going to prove to you what I'm talking about. Well, look what it says here. It says, and I will, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. I will pray the Father, and he shall what? Give you another comforter that, ye may abide, that he may abide with you forever. 
even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right here, I'm showing you, Jesus said, I'm going to give you another. This another is translated not another like another kind. It's another one like me. In other words, he said, I'm going to give you a comforter. The Amplified Bible said a comforter is a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, an advocate, a strengthener, a standby. In other words, the Holy Spirit is coming because Jesus said, I'm here with you on the earth, but I'm going to sit at the right hand of God the Father. But I need you to still be in close relationship with me. So in other words, so I am going away, but I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus manifested. In other words, everything that the Holy Spirit does is because of what Jesus is doing. The, the, the Holy Spirit is the hands of Jesus. We got to understand that. So how important is the Holy Spirit? Somebody say, I have Jesus. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Because they are synonymous. If you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. If you wake up in the morning, if you, if you say, oh, good morning, Jesus, you can say, good morning, Holy Spirit. It's the same. Amen? So when you wake up in the morning, do you say, good morning, Jesus, or do you say, good morning, Holy Spirit? It's the same. Because you're, you're developing a personal relationship with him. Amen. And, and so he's saying here, the comforter will abide with you forever. And then I like this part right here. It says, the spirit of truth, whom the world can never see. So he's saying that uh, that's, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. This word truth, my God, in the Greek means Allah, ye, fa, a, in the Greek. Somebody said, that might not be what it said, but you don't know it, though, but, you know, the Greek, that's what the Greek is, amen? Allah, aye, thiva, which means um, it's identical to over there. It was the identical word in John 1, 14, when it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's Jesus. Jesus is grace, and Jesus is truth. That truth is the same word. So the same person that's the truth in John 1 is the same person that's the truth in John 14. So you got to understand that. When we say um, Jesus... Um, he is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit today. He, the Holy Spirit lives in you and Jesus lives in you because he made it a way that the Holy Spirit can live in you and you can experience Jesus just like they did in the Bible days. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is vital. The Holy Spirit is so important to a, a believer's life. To ignore him is to ignore your, the best companion you could have. To ignore him, walk around, don't talk to him, and don't acknowledge him. You can't get to know him more because you, you're speaking to people, but you're not speaking to Jesus. You're not, you know, so we need to make sure that I know I'm talking to people who sometimes been saved a while and you know about the Holy Spirit, and, but there's always a greater level of intimacy you can go to. In him, amen, and comes through the knowledge of him talking about this. And the first thing I want to know and want to say is that, yeah, unveiling Jesus to the world and to the church, that the, Jesus is the Holy Spirit in manifestation. When you see something done in the book of Acts, it was the Holy Spirit's power, but it was Jesus. Amen. Why? Because look what's it. Look, look here. Look at John um, 16. Let me, let me show you this. Then I'm, then I'm going to start preaching. This is just introduction here. But look what it says here. And John 16, I'm not really in any, 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 um, I'm not in the rush or anything like that because Cowboys not in the playoffs. So I don't have to look at nothing today. I mean, I would just see it, but I'm not interested. So, amen. Look what it says here. John 16 and 15. I mean, John 16 and 15, look at this. Look at, from what I just said, put this in mind. Look what it says. How be it when he, the spirit of truth. Now, I can say the spirit of Jesus or the spirit of grace. When the spirit of truth or the spirit of Jesus is come, 
he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, for whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And look at verse 14. I like this. He shall glorify, Jesus said this, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. In other words, when the Holy Spirit come, Jesus said, and live in you, he will glorify me. In other words, the credit won't go to me. Lord have mercy. In other words, you know the Holy Spirit may show up and be powerful, but we're not, we're not giving him the credit. We're not giving him the glory. We are giving Jesus the glory because Jesus is the one who died and rose, and he's the king of the earth. So Jesus is the way he, it, Jesus is working and being with us intimately through the Holy Spirit today. So in every, anything God ever do in your life, give Jesus the praise. And everything, somebody need to give Jesus to pray. Somebody, you might not have no steak you eat today, but thank God for your oodles and noodles. You need to give Jesus to pray. Somebody sitting up in here, you don't know uh, uh, your, and when your prayer coming to pass, but thank God for what they already done. Give Jesus to praise. You got to learn how to give some Jesus to praise, not, not everybody else. Somebody give my job to praise. You give your money to praise. You give your cum laude laude to praise. You so smart and cum laude laude. So you think you did everything by your cum laude laude laude. Thank God for cum laude laude. But cum laude laude can't stand up in front of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one that did everything. So everything, every good and perfect gift comes from God. So learn how to give Jesus the praise. As soon as you get a blessing, woo, thank you, Jesus. Don't, don't, I mean, right in the grocery store. Somebody came to you and said, hey, I want to pay for all that grocery. Woo, thank you, Jesus. You ain't got time to be talking about uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy. No, 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 no. No, we're getting the credit to Jesus. When I tell you what, you want to you wanna, you wanna cause a racket, start talking Jesus. You, you riding on the bus, ain't nobody said nothing. Everybody talking about God. But when somebody said Jesus, everybody stands still because there's power in that name. Somebody said Jesus. Don't be afraid. You don't know. See, when you said Jesus, you said the whole Bible. He is the word. So you just know, you need to say, you see a truck coming about to hit you and your family. You ain't got to try to find the Greek and the Hebrew. What scripture should I stand on? Jesus. Because when you said Jesus, all of heaven stands at attention. When you said Jesus, every angel starts going into motion. When you said Jesus, healing shows up. When you say Jesus, not Muhammad, not Allah, not Buddha. Jesus. When Jesus' name is said, everything starts changing for the good. Somebody said Jesus. Jesus. And the Holy Spirit may be doing the act. But the Holy Spirit is Jesus' hands in the earth. We unveiling him today because ignoring this, that's why things can't happen because we're not doing the pattern right. Somebody said, Jesus is good to me. I dare you say Jesus. Say it again. Say it again. Say it one more time. Say it again. See, when you said Jesus, every depression got to go. When you said Jesus, every problem can't remain. When you said Jesus, every dead got to raise. When you said Jesus, everything got to be changed and rearranged for the good in your life. You don't need to know the whole Bible. All you need to know is Jesus. Ah. Somebody say, I don't have that. I don't know that scripture. You don't need to know it. You need to know it for your good, but if you got Jesus, because in the Bible days, they didn't have no Bible. They didn't walk around with no Bible. But Peter and John went to the book of Acts, saw a man lame from his mother's womb, and came and said, money I don't have, but such as I have, I'm about to give it to you. What you got, Peter? In the name of Jesus. And when he said that, the crippled bones stopped popping. Come on now. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was doing the work, but the Holy Spirit was the hands of Jesus. 
he was at the right hand of God the Father, but still doing miracles. And if he can do miracles through Paul, if he can do miracles through Peter, if he can do miracles through me, he can do some miracles through you. All you need to have is the right code. If you go there, you got the wrong code, you can't get in. You got the wrong ID number, you can't get in your bank account. But just put in the right one, automatically the door open because you got the right code. So I'm teaching people to know Jesus. So every time we call, we think we got to have something different. We think we got to, you know, uh, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. You, you got a word for me? No! I got one word, Jesus. Because when you say Jesus, everything changes. He's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, if that's so, how many know we need all the Holy Spirit we can get? We need all the Jesus we can get. So if Jesus said there is more that you need than what you have when you get born again, we need to pay attention to it. If Jesus said the Holy Spirit is what you need, and yet he told the disciples don't do nothing. Don't preach. Don't go lay hands on nobody. Don't do anything. Wait in Jerusalem till you be endued with power. And yet, when they told them that, they all, 120 of them, waited in Jerusalem in the upper room, and they didn't do anything. They didn't preach. They didn't, and we preaching without the Holy Spirit. We laying hands just why didn't happen. We doing everything that Jesus said not to do, and expect him to help us. So the first thing we need to do is understand, wait a minute, Jesus said, don't do anything without the Holy Spirit. And what the church is, is confused about that because, see, what the devil is, he's the author of confusion. And so he'll show up and say, they ain't talking to you because you have the Holy Spirit because you are saved. Because you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. True, but there's different functions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in first to baptize you into the body. You are saved. You are born again. But yet there is another experience that he told them. And yet the church tried to say it went out with the last apostle. It didn't go out with the last apostle because I'm speaking in tongues and I'm not in the apostle. Amen. I once was without it, and now I have it, and having it is better. And I'm going to show you 10 years, 8 years, 20 years after the day of Pentecost, they receive. And today, we have people in church saying, I'm okay. I don't need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because I already have it because I'm born again. Like I said one time, I said, I don't need that. I'm already saved. I already got the Holy Spirit. Do all that devil I've been kicking up, and I know I'm saved. And the man said, you're not, you, know, you, need, you need to speak in tongues. I said, no, I don't. No, I'm saved. See, somebody came with a wrong doctrine to me and told me I need to speak in tongues to get saved. He ain't know my story. If I ain't saved, somebody did something because I was the devil. But yet he changed me. The wrong teaching would mess people up. It's to say that I'm okay because, you know, I'm saved, you know, uh, sanctified, and, you know, I don't need that because I, I'm all right. I'm, but see, what you are is born again. Now, I'm going to show you through the scriptures so you can be able to teach somebody, so you can be able to show somebody, because what we're getting ready to go in the spirit realm, if you don't know this, you're going to run out because you're not going to understand what's going on, but you're going to miss your blessing. You're going to miss your next level, not be, being ignorant. Ignorant means not knowing. Sister P came to me one night from me and her. She went with some sister, and we were living in Richmond. Then just got married, and she came to me one night talking about, uh, I got it tonight. I said, you got what? I got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I said, what? What in the world you done went down there and got into? <laughs> you got what? She said, you need to go. I said, I don't need to go nowhere. I already got all I got. I don't need that. I know what I have. Brown there, you be brown there, you better be, 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 be watching you come back here. I don't know what you coming back here with, someone you got it. Because I was taught that that's not what you need anymore. It's gone out. It's available, but it ain't for you. And so I, I, I told her, you get out my face. You, what's wrong with you? And then she slept me a book. I said, what is this book? Give me this book. 
wide tongues. Ooh. Kenneth Hagin. That's why I give it to you. <laughs> and I read that and I said, you know, because I'm a person like this. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right. Some people wrong and know you're wrong, but you not you 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 too good to 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 accept I can be wrong. Praise the Lord. Wow. I hope you received that. Now listen, remember what I said. The unveiling Jesus. He is so many things to us in our lives, but he is also the Holy Spirit manifested. In other words, Jesus said, is it expedient for you that I go away? Because if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. Another comforter, that another is one just like me. So actually, the Holy Spirit is the hands of Jesus. I hope that bless you. And to know that and to value the Holy Spirit, begin to say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus, because they are anonymous. When you say good morning, Jesus, you say good morning, Holy Spirit. They are the same. They are God. And I tell you, the more we know him, the more we experience that and practice that. Practice the presence of, of Jesus. Everything else will be added to you. God bless you. I want to invite you out personally to our ministry. Those of you who are watching, oh, it's the first um, month of the year. Come on out. Celebrate with us. It's a thousand times better here than on TV. Come on out, and I'd love to uh, meet you. Uh, let me know you're here. I'd like to hug you, shake your hand, and I appreciate those who are watching and, and things that God is doing in your life is exciting to us to hear the good reports. I want to say, come on out. We start every Sunday at 9 o'clock, 6148 Jefferson Avenue, Newport News, Virginia, Dunamis Christian Center. We love you. And listen, those of you again who don't know the Lord, listen, you can know him by your heart, by confession. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Say this prayer and mean it after me, and you'll be in the family of God. Lord Jesus, come on, repeat it. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe you died and rose on the third day. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Do something in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you received that and you said that, hey, welcome to the family of God. God bless you. We love you. And um, keep watching.